Welcome to the 26th election in American history. It was held on Tuesday, November 6, 1888, and a lot had happened during the presidency of Grover Cleveland. Vice President Hendricks tragically died early in his sleep while on a trip back to Indiana. Hendricks, a popular man, would be appraised by both Democrats and Republicans, and after this, it would leave the position vacant. But a couple months before, in Washington, D.C., the Washington Monument dedication was finally finished in 1885, and after construction had started in 1848. Honoring the legacy of President George Washington, it became an important and symbolic national monument of freedom and hope in America. Furthermore, the Statue of Liberty was unveiled in New York City in late 1886. The statue was a gift from France to celebrate the alliance between both nations. The celebrations would last all day long, with Cleveland having the honor of praising the statue for its symbolism of liberty for all. The statue would welcome millions of immigrants in the future and would become an iconic symbol of American freedom and prosperity. Another event in this time was Grover Cleveland's marriage in the White House. Cleveland married 21-year-old Frances Preston, the youngest wife of a president, and the media would go crazy after this announcement. For legislation, the Dawes Act occurred. In short, the government broke up and sold tribal land to the highest bidder in exchange giving citizenship to natives. They did this to break up Native American culture and to assimilate them. This would have a catastrophic effect on Native Americans forever. There was also the Scott Act that would expand the Chinese Exclusion Act and ban Chinese laborers. This would also be a tragic act affecting thousands of people and kicked many immigrants who helped build America and its frontiers. Lastly, Melville Fuller became the eighth chief justice in American history after Morrison Waite died from pneumonia. For the election, the Republicans' nominees for president were Ohio Senator John Sherman, with the other nominees being veteran Michigan Governor Russell Alger and Benjamin Harrison, veteran and senator from the swing state of Indiana, the grandson of 9th President William Henry Harrison. While for vice president, the nominees were Minister to France Levi Pete Morton from New York and Austria-Hungary Ambassador William Phelps from New Jersey. At last, Harrison and Morton won their respective nominations in 1888, while for Democrats, their nominee for president was of course incumbent President Grover Cleveland, the first Democrat to be renominated since Van Buren in 1840, and for running mate, the main nominee was former Ohio Senator Alan G. Thurman, and in the end, Thurman became the new running mate to President Cleveland. Minor parties involved were the prohibitionists nominating activist and veteran Clinton B. Fisk, while the newly formed Union Labor Party nominated Illinois State Senator Alson Streeter. The campaigning involved heavy hits. Democrats campaigned on Cleveland's achievements, fighting against corruption and the good economy, while Harrison and the Republicans fought against Cleveland's low tariffs in the Midwest, attacking him for his extremely high amount of vetoes, while Harrison made speeches from the front porch of his house. And the winner was Benjamin Harrison won, becoming the 23rd president in American history. Harrison won with 233 electoral votes, but with only 47.80% of the vote. And Levi P. Morton became the 22nd vice president in American history. Grover Cleveland got 168 electoral votes, but winning 48.63% of the vote, meaning that Cleveland actually won the popular vote but still lost. This became similar to the the election of 1876 were, the candidate lost even after getting the most votes. Prohibitionist and Fisk got a respectable 2.2% in this election, while the Union Labor Party and Streeter got 1.31% of the vote. This election was a close one and it came down to the wire to whoever was the victor in New York and Indiana. Interestingly, Cleveland still lost even after improving his vote tally from 1884, as seen for example in New York. In the Senate, the Republicans won, winning 39 out of the 76 seats right on the threshold. For the House, the Republicans barely won, winning 164 seats, two below the threshold. Thomas Reed, a Northern Republican from Maine, soon became the 32nd Speaker of the House. 
Harrison took his oath of office on Monday, March 4th, 1889. Harrison, in a short speech unlike his grandfather, talked about reinstating protective tariffs to help the working man, urging statehood for western territories, and advocating pensions for veterans. This was the start for Benjamin Harrison, but the fight against Cleveland would not be over yet. And thus, the 26th election in American history came to an end. Thank you so much for watching, please like, share and subscribe, stay tuned for the next video.